perfect end What does perfect even mean? Is there even such a thing? Oh, can we switch up all the rules? Hi! So, today is a very special day. I am going to be doing a Shoyo Hinata from Haikyuu uh, tutorial. Makeup and then talking about the costume wigs and where they where I've sourced them and gotten them from so maybe you at home can also follow in my footsteps and do the exact same um, cosplay because why not? First steps I always do when preparing my makeup would have to be tie my hair up because I need this mop of a hair to not be in my way on my face so let's get into doing that and to help more I'm gonna go get a Alice band that kind of swished the little wispy bits just off my face. Alice band required, or acquired, more accurately said. Let's slip that there. Ready to go. First steps. I have with me my just kind of travel pack makeup, my first step, and then all my other things laid out here. Of course, I'll be going into every one that I use and explaining how to apply and why I use it. First step, I only recently got into because of how it helps create a smooth complexion, would be um, foundation primer, so just primer in general. Um, this one is the Morphe branded one, you can see there. It's just, um, looks like that, I've got that online. And what I do when I go into this, <clears throat> is I apply a little to my finger, then I dab around area, the whole kind of area mostly the you know where the acne is most prominent is what I advise and it should feel quite actually comfortable so like I say when you get feel like it's a bit dry dab a little bit like only a drop like I'm doing don't do too much because you don't want it to feel heavy and also you don't want to overstimulate your skin with too much primer at least that sounds right I again I am a novice person at this I'm learning as I grow. So you too may be actually saying, hey Rose, your technique is a bit off. What are you doing? And I could be like, thank you for the tip. I probably didn't know that because as I said, I'm new and I'm trying my best to grow at being a better makeup artist. So once that's done, um, you kind of feel you got the whole area. You let it dry for a second and then you go straight in into what I usually do is dampen a sponge. So here's my sponge. It's a beauty blender. Um, I know they have different names, but I'm I'm like I'm like a boyfriend. Like if you gave me a piece of makeup equipment, I'll look at it and I'll I'll make the name up because I can't. I'm better than a boyfriend because probably I'll know what it's used for. Thank goodness. Whew. But I'm not um, experienced in saying like I, I call something like this like a the eyebrow brush. I call it. Um, this is a spoolie, as I've been told, and that to me is the silliest name, but hey. Anyway, enough chitter chatter. What you want to do is dampen a sponge. This is what you're going to use to kind of apply your concealer. There you go, a damp sponge. Um, why you make it moist is because it's a liquid foundation you're applying. It doesn't stick to the sponge. You're not. It's better to have it wet, so it, when applied it's soft to touch on the skin. So as you can tell I have some kind of what I call affected areas, so areas like this um, and here and here like the red areas where I either had spots or have acne and I want to cover those up because obviously I want to have a clear complexion. So I'm going to go in with the Maybelline New York Fit Me brand as you can see here. This number is number five, they all have the numbers at the top here as you can see. Um, I go for this because this obviously suits my complexion. When you buy your own, you must make sure you do a colour match so it's not, not your tone. First off, it's a little brush like this. We're going to go in and just dab in every little area that is just red. And... Hmm. It's almost like I'm painting my face and then I close stop that and then when I feel like I've got the majority I then go in with the sponge and then I dab it out just literally dabbing it I mean some people do this with their finger because it's less like the, less of the um, products taken up by the sponge but hygienically I prefer just to do it with a clean sponge 
think of um, foundation like painting, because it kind of, it really is. You, you know, are building up on layers of a canvas, be it your face, and you're making sure that canvas is smooth and also um, beautiful on appearance to see it, you know, clear and solid colour. You don't want blotches is what I'm trying to say. You don't want lighter skip parts to darker parts and more, like you want to... Um, even complexion. And then what I'm doing is when I see, because I obviously as I mentioned before the product's attaching itself to the sponge, I could just go in on other little lighter areas and dab on it because that product's being used and I'm not wasting it, which is a good thing. And then there's going to be times where after dabbing you feel, okay, um, those areas I've mentioned, uh, I've done, they're not covered completely so you can always go in a second time, do a, another coat to cover it more succinctly because that's, you know, there's no point doing it if you can still see it. I'm happy with that because now obviously I need to do my, my bags. So I'm going to take the brush again and I'm going to liberally apply to the corner of my eye so and then underneath my eye like you can stretch that out right there. I do a lot because I have heavy eye bags. Some people, there's like no right, some people dot it like that to be more generous. I'm just like, you know what, bish bash bosh, I want the job done. I just kind of just evenly like swipe. I also do another thing which um, helps with the nose because sometimes your nose has like bumps or redness within this area because of the cre crevice. I just kind of swoop in like that just on the nostrils and I dab it out all around my nose so then my nose is also um, concealed and appears smaller sometimes I've been hard I don't know but again we're gonna dab but this one you can dab all over your eye as well it's not too t I never used to but then I you know thinking like I didn't want patches I just thought screw it I'll just also do and when you're when you have the product you just you want to as it was um I can't think of the word right now but someone in the comments will probably tell me it's when you want to just fade it out so you're like you're blurring it so you're like spreading it it's not stuck in, it's not clumped in one corner you want to drag it out so that you don't see an, a prominent line where the makeup ends so you want to fade it is what I'm saying so you can bring it down to your chin and everything like go over the nose because why not go up the brow just so that there's no apparent, like you don't want to see where you've applied makeup, you want to have the appearance that, you know, you're just, there's no makeup to have been applied. And there we have it. Again, like I've mentioned, dabbing motions as a sponge, you can always go in for a second time with the uh, concealer on these areas that you want to make sure you're covered up. But I tend to be a bit easy on my skin because I don't wish to kind of overwhelm it with so much makeup. Now we move on to the next step, which will be the foundation, essentially. Yep, it's liquid foundation. So foundation comes in many forms, but I won't go into too much about it. It's the Fit Me range again, so similar to this concealer uh, from Maybelline. And it's shade 100, as it st the, uh, st uh, states there. So you can check that out. You can get these in any drugstore and even online. Um, and it's crucial that, again, if you're doing it in person, you do go on the tester pots and you match, you colour match. Because your foundation is just basically meant to be your skin, as you will see when I apply it. I don't really have a... I kind of first kind of go really all around because it's my whole cover. So I'm just going to, like take this and just I have yet to been taught another method I'm just like well this is gonna be on my face if you go over your lips also that's not an issue because you're gonna be later going in with a probably just a simple lip gloss or some liner that's because I'm doing a male as uh, shoyo is Hinata is um, you know there's not a lot of lipped to be done. I'm just gonna put like a... Also again, going back to that line, you don't want to stop here because you'll create this makeup line. You're gonna have to just simply swoop it and take the excess excess um, concealer and just put it down around. Now looking at this, I'm okay with the majority but I am gonna again go in with the concealer and just go over the infected areas. Lastly but not least, um, that's me concealed as it were, I feel like I have one tone going back to the canvas, it's all kind of one solid colour. You may find that, you know, in the first process of covering the blemishes, you didn't do a good, so example, this one on my lips, still slightly red, so I say it's completely okay to come back with the um, 
concealer just to apply a little bit on there or wherever the affected area is there we have that base you're ready to move on and by move on i mean take a nice little make a big big your biggest makeup brush and you want to come in with a matte powder this is the ramel london stay matte um it's number zero like zero zero one uh, transparent because I'm very pale um, but again this is what I typically use but I've sim I also have extended to you can get in like revolution lace baking powder some people just choose to use this to set so what it is is I'm setting my face now so the makeup it's an oil I've been using oil based product and that can leave like a shine to it so that it doesn't seem shiny when I'm wearing my makeup I set it with a powder so it becomes more of an actual skin tone complexion. The texture is gone basically. But I'm just going to use this one because that's what I use often. And I'm just going to cut like really generously get my brush right in there and just like go to town on my face really. That is it. It's a very quick step I know. Now on to the fun part. The um, making oneself m appear more masculine than feminine. So, it is the contouring stage. I use uh, Revolution's Makeup Revolution London Ultra Contour Palette. Available in drugstores and online. I swear by this. I literally, any uh, gender bend, like male cosplay I do, I always contour with this palette. Love it. I can even show the insides because there you go. Uh, all the, all the, as you can see, that's my most used one, my favorite one. This comes with highlights, contour, you know, literally the whole shebang. The two brushes I typically use, um, and people usually vary, is this kind of big one because you want to make sure you fade it out, the contour lines, and this is my highlight. This is your little fan brush because what you do is you go to your cheekbone and your highlight, which I'll be explaining in a moment. But first, let's get this jawline more prominent because as you can tell, it's a bit, well, you can't really see much of it. We want to make that pop. So what you do, you get the, it doesn't matter how much you get, um, you can, some people tap it or blow in it to get like if you don't because once it hits it's very strong and then you have to blend that out but you kind of stretch your neck and you'll see where your natural jawline is i always start under like right here dabbing and dabbing motions help because it also means if you do a line you have to commit to that dabbing's like one space and i can take away and see if i like that placement and i also basically bring it up behind the ear so it seems like it has a purpose and placement as well but with the actual under bit i always just drag what I dab so I dab under the turn like let's call it the turn here's the jaw itself like the hinge and I then drag it up to where the chin at the end is when you first see it you think that's a lot like you think oh god but when you look down see the final look it doesn't appear that way at all only in certain like angles do you go like look I've painted a jaw on and then the as what I'm doing now is the blending phase which is circular motions so with this is obviously a contour for the jaw. I would say a happy turn to the side. You can see obviously the shadow and shading. That is completely acceptable because when you're in character and everything, it just seems natural. And I'm always, I don't know why it is, but I just, this lightest color, I always use this color. So I'm gonna go with the cheekbones. Hina's girl's got a bit of a round face, but I still want to seem like... And again, I could use a smaller brush that actually is shaped like this, but it, I'm used to doing it this way. So what you do is you want to fill the underneath part of your cheekbone. So th this is my whole cheekbone. And then underneath, this is where you're going to be applying the um, contour to your cheek to make it appear you have a slender face. So you feel it, and it's there. And you then dab. You want to dab, and then you go up, and then you pull it down. And at first you'll think that's really strong, but again, we have yet to start the blending out phase. Some people squeeze in their uh, cheeks like, mm, the help. <laughs> also, this is important to get symmetrically done. Go along the line and just do circular motions. Not too big, keep it kind of compact. Some people do this as well. This is only with the axis. If you go in with a new powder, just please, please remember to either blow or tap because um, it is like, yeah, Con um, palette thing is very strong. Now, with that brush used, we're gonna go in for the highlight. I just like to do a highlight that really pops. You can go for a more natural one, but I always love going for this really shiny one here. What I'm gonna do is take my brush, shake it like that, 
see that it's on the uh, brush itself and then the top of the cheekbone which is literally just here just gonna go like this swish swish and then you're gonna go over your like bridge of your nose because it's kind of like a it draw it's a center piece if you like did contour like you just these are the highlight spots you can actually look online the uh, like there's like an anat like anatomy like face drawn like people direct like people contour here and they also they highlight above the brow and again I'm just going sideways like upwards like just touching of it to have control last but not least um, I mentioned before about the lips you can even use a Vaseline or a gloss I kind of go for uh, Lancome's Juicy Tubes uh, this was a gift actually and um, I don't know if they're still making these but yeah there you go there's what it looks like it's just like a, a lip balm with kind of tint to it like so you kind of squeeze a bit out of it stretch your lips dab to the bottom and then draw outwards that way But now we're going to get into the um, makeup, oh not the makeup, the wig and the costume. Hey, so wig cap, this is quite given, and uh, the Hinata wig I have. So how I put my long hair into a cap is I take all of it into one little uh, ponytail. I then pull the ponytail when it gets just to that tightest point. I then pull it, but not all the way through, tighten, let it flop, and that's that there. People have other ways, it's the quickest way personally for me to get it done. And then take my wig cap, put it under my neck, pull the ponytail out, uh, take my fingers where the bottom bit is, so the bit that's kind of grips onto the forehead, drag it over, and then underneath kind of swoosh all the other hair up. And once it's in there, I hold it, pull my ears out, and happy with every bit of hair stuck inside, I let go, pull up a bit more I need to, there's a wig cap. Now. I got my wig from Unique So. I actually got it originally for a Mafui cosplay from the anime Given. I still plan to do him, I just <laughs> need to get around to getting all the materials for him. But uh, I thought, you know what, this could also double up as a Hinata wig, so win-win. So I uh, hopefully everyone knows how kind of weak the basis of wigs, they kind of come looking like this. Uh, you got your little straps here that kind of keep it um, firm and attached. I always go for the loosest to be frank, and then you hit those two, and what you want to do is take your thumbs, flip it like that, get your forehead, place it in there, and then basically pull it over where your bun is, make sure you pull it up, make sure it's over the ears, and uh, then style it to however you like it. You can have emo hinata, like, or you can have a uh, normal hinata, which is basically, and if it's too high, you can raise it a bit. You can floof it up, so it's like more his like kind of spiky style. I have to note when the wig did arrive, every typical wig you do receive will be longer than you may expect it to be. Like for example, if you have like a fringe character, be it Todoroki or Hinata, the fringe may come down to here. So I actually had to alter these. I ha I'll put a photo here. <laughs> yeah, that is the when Hinata arrived. So as you can see, I had like mutton chops. On the side here, I just needed to, I needed to get a scissor and just got like that, which was terrifying to say the least. But um, but yes, this is the wig. It is from Unique So. Again, I would just reiterate by putting below here the specific name given to this wig. It is comfortable. I recommend the brand. But here it is. This is the shirt. It is well made and sewn. There was no issues. It's a nice actual like sporting material. The costume itself cost about £11 total. It is from the Chinese seller Miko Costumes. I'll be putting the name below for you guys to see. Um, it came with the whole set, so it came with the shorts, the shirt, and I didn't expect but knee pads as well. You know, it's an elastic waistband, so if you feel like maybe the size too tight, it can adjust just by a little smidgen in case you're a bit wider, which is always great to have, love that, because nothing's worse then waiting all this time to get a cosplay and then it doesn't even fit you. They do all the kind of characters, so I definitely will be shopping from them again. But let's just get into this thing, shall we? Hopefully that edit work. I don't know. First time you're trying to be first time you're trying to be cool. Oh boy. Uh here it is. The cosplay itself. Uh good old 
Number 10. And Udon wants to say hi too. Come here. Yes, to do with La Cosplay. It is um, comfortable. Knee pads were an add in bonus. Didn't expect that. Uh, definitely will be buying from Miko Costumes again. And that was my Shoyo Hinata. Um, tutorial i hope it was helpful i hope and if it wasn't you know if you have any questions let me know thank you again for watching as always like the video subscribe please comment we want to know what it is you want to see from more from us and as always stay awesome and thanks again but wait there's more in fact if you enjoy what we do so much as you've shown in the past to have which again thank you thank you so much from me and kitty we you are just you know two best friends who enjoy cosplaying from anything and everything appreciate all the support given but as i say there's more if you enjoy you know how we are as these characters that we all love from these animes and tv shows you're able to even have a piece of it at home. We have recently opened up an Etsy store, uh, link below, a uh, little picture here of it all set up, um, and we're currently selling prints. We're looking to expand to more cute things such as stickers and keychains for you to have as memorabilia and for us to kind of deepen that threshold of, you know, as cosplayers to say the least. So, if you wanna, if you wanna go that step further and, you know, have something that is what we put our heart and soul into, then please, by all means, go buy a print. It could be one, it could just be even a comment or a review. Anything really would be so greatly appreciated. Link below, and I hope you enjoy. We'll be looking towards doing more shoots like this, potentially even ones with Bakugo and Deku, or even, uh, you know, we've got Kagihima, or other Haikyuu characters, to, say, to name a few. You know, you've given us so much to us. We want to return the favour and, ex and have something for you. So, if you enjoy Hinata and Kagiyama, then the Etsy store is just for you. Honey, I'm perfect What does perfect even mean?